The Aura intraoperative aberometry system has two components. The first component, as you can see here, is mounted underneath the scope. And this uh, provides, of course, the way for measurements. And then, of course, there's a control unit. You can see here, we just completed an Aura case. And the patient elected to be uh, a very specific patient. You want it to be between 1.5 and 1.75. And as you can see, that I put a 13 diopter lens for a minus 1.58. Interestingly enough, in this patient, we had planned to put a 12.5, but anyway, let's take a look. When you start the surgery, the first thing we do is we enter all the information. This is usually done by my surgical coordinator in the office, where it's beamed into the cloud, and then once the machine turns on, it pre-populates, so it saves a lot of time in the operating room. But this is with information, uh, for example, the eye, the measurements from your Iowa Master or Lens Star, which is important for comparison internally to the actual measurement. And once that's done, of course, and you can edit all this information and even mark whether or not you're using second or not. What's nice about the Aura is not only does it give you information intraoperatively, there is a mechanism to store post-op information and then through that be able to optimize your nomograms, be able to optimize whether or not your uh, results within plus or minus 0.50 are better with femto, without femto, etc. So it's a great tracking and reporting feature. So here we pick fragmentation, save. Uh, it works very, very seamlessly. Things are entered in here and then at the time of the surgery, as we'll see, we've had two measurements. This was the first measurement and told me these are the power lenses. I was going to place a 12.5 in this particular case for 1.5. But it told me to reach 1.7513. So in this case, which I see very commonly, I actually made an intraoperative adjustment to what I was planning preoperatively. And I find by doing that, my results are extremely tight around the desired spherical equivalent outcome. You can see the stigmatism is down. We did LRIs here, or arcuate incisions, I should say. And based on this information, I was able to switch from 12.5, which I planned beforehand, to 13. We'll find out tomorrow how the patient did. That's aura intraoperative aberometry. It has other features, some of the most important, are toric lenses. And it has the ability not just to measure the spherical equivalent, but it has the ability to measure the toricity. Here's a good example of a toric lens. And you'll see that my initial plan was to place a 15 diopter lens. Uh, ZCT225 is what I had. My pre-op keratometry was 1.7, based on the IO Master case. And this, this read 129. You can see the axis is correct. I did a second measurement, measured a little more. I ended up going with a 15 diopter ZCT225. And afterwards, I aligned it using the Aura post implantation measurements, which basically gives a left and right clock, clockwise or counterclockwise guidance, literally like a real time GPS to help me align the toric lens to minimize astigmatism and get this patient seeing Plato. Now, as good as Aura is, there are challenges. The Aura relies on a very clear optical visual interface from the Aura machine. Of course, the waveform has to go through the cornea, the lens, and bounce off the retina. Uh, and there are times when we're not getting a good measurement, whether it's a speculum, whether it's a dry eye, whether it's something to do uh, with bubbles in the eye. And once you get good at it, you're able to get everything in position to get readings. I would say about 99% of the time, it's not perfect yet. And furthermore, this is always an evolution. Uh, the formulas that are still estimating effective lens position, something that is not taken into account to fully with intraoperative aberometry because it cannot measure that z-axis positioning of the lens. So we still have some ways to get better, but this is the best we've got, and it's pretty darn good. We're getting LASIK-like outcomes with cataract surgery, and that's really where the turf is turning to, refractive laser cataract surgery. This is, for me, a must-have. Uh, if this gets out of whack one day, I will consider canceling my cases because it's that important.